Um, I'm, I come from Norway and I moved to Thailand about four and a half years ago. I've been living in Nobo since September 2006. My name is Uli Ergen. I'm in charge of Blessed Homes. We're working here on the Thai Burma border with the Korean children. Yes, so for the last uh, four years I've been running this orphanage. So at the moment we have 37 children here and eight local Korean staff. Uh, I also, I'm also running another orphanage south of here with 20 children and this spring we're hoping to open the third orphanage. Uh, all our orphanages are located on the Thai Burmese border. All the kids and most of the staff are all Karen. Because of the situation in Burma, a lot of these kids are refugees and have fled from the Burmese army. Uh, some of the kids have lost their parents in war, some due to sickness. Another big group of the children have come from families who are dissolved because of the war. Uh, well, my first time to Thailand was when I was 12 years old. And we came with our family to visit a missionary lady we knew in this village. Uh, and at the same time we went to visit an orphanage in one of the camps. Uh, I remember saying at the same time, uh, when leaving that camp that I wanted to come back here one day. So I asked uh, the people who were running an organization called Partners if they needed me. And I told them I didn't want to sit in an office or anything like that in a big city, but I wanted to be more like outfield. Um, so I came out here September 2006 um, with no bigger plans than to stay for a year and get to know the people here. But uh, six months into that year, I had already three kids living with me. Uh, two neighbor kids started coming uh, coming around a lot and found out that they also had no parents living with them. So together at that time with the director of the Bible school that I worked at, we started making the plan for this orphanage. And for me it was like a deciding point for me because I had like four more four months left of my time here in Thailand and I thought Okay, this could be it. This could be my time here. Um, I could be done in four months. I could go back to my regular life in Norway and kind of for forget about life here. Or I could choose to stay and see what help I could make. Uh, my church was willing to finance uh, a bit in the start. And then as it all went on, I just used local uh, people that I knew, just used the network around uh, church and friends. But then we later become five and then 20 within a few months. And then we started to looking into finding sponsorships for the kids. So I had no, I had no idea what we really needed and how much we needed. But so things have changed the last four years. And I think we find a good, uh, good way of running this thing now because otherwise I couldn't be starting more orphanages either. So unlike me, most of the kids get up like five, 5.30. The kids are divided into like four groups, I think now. Uh, where some have responsibility for cooking, some for cleaning the outside area, the toilets, bathrooms, and stuff like that. And then there is, I think three days a week now, there is morning devotions. Where we get together, we pray, and we just sing some songs together. Usually some kids will get jump into my bed and play with my computer or something like at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. So I just hardly awake and like, uh, what are you guys doing? Uh, then the kids will separate into the three schools they're attending. So that, that part of the day is the, it's kind of my free time where I get to do other stuff. Because when they get back at like 3, 4, it's a lot of play time and especially now though, it's a lot of studies for final exams. School here is a bit different. If you fail, you have to do the whole year again. So I actually had two kids now. If they don't pass this year, they can't continue anymore. So they're kind of on a tight schedule with school from 8 to, eight to 4 and then a couple hour break and then they got more studies, home studies with a special teacher that we got here now. Just making sure they can come through the fifth grade. The younger kids, they have more free time, so they uh, will play some football, run around with guns, shooting each other. 
playgrounds that is uh, and yeah go on with daily life here with chickens and dogs and pigs just living in harmony with the animals here when you're working with Karen you're kind of facing the religious aspect too like, I guess 40% of the Karen and are Christians and a lot the rest are Buddhist and then you have a mix of animism that kind of influences both camps for me to work here with Buddhists and Christians is not a problem. You just get to sit down with them, have them on your knees and say like, just pour into them every day that I love you and you're special. And just, just to be able to live this life for the last four years has really kind of changed my own religious life as well. It's, God is not far away, but he's a part of my daily life and I get to be a part of that every day. If the kids are Buddhist or if the kids are Christian, it doesn't matter, they still need the same love, they still need the same care and they're still suffering from a terrible regime in Burma. So I try not to distinguish between them. I know, I know my God doesn't distinguish. their kids and they're, they're all lovely. <laughs> yes. we're, as we're located right here on the Thai-Burmese border, and in a kind of a Karen area, uh, you, have, you kind of meet the conflict between the Burmese and the Karen in a quite strong way many times. And like a couple years ago, the Burmese really made a, an attack here along the border and forced pretty much all of the Karen resistance army away from their uh, locations. Um, and then a lot of the kids here kind of, some of them got their first real experience with the war, because some of them are so young. Some have experienced some from before. Uh, and I remember it was quite special at the another orphanage that I run here. Uh, you had one of the kid's parents, or his mother already died. His father was a soldier on the other side. And some of the other kids had a soldier. Their father was a soldier on the Karen side. So one of the father, he first lost his leg and then on a landmine. And then the other kid's father, he died in the crossfire. So you had kind of a tension between uh, two families there where you had three kids on one side and two kids on the other side like really facing the war in a in a way you wouldn't expect happening at an orphanage uh, so I remember that was a special time it was weird to see how 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 the war really affects kids and oh, um, Yeah, because the Karen, the Karen army is divided into two. You have the DKBA, the Democratic Karen Buddhist army, which worked with the Burmese and the KNU. So these kids, these families, father, they they were soldiers on both sides. So when so when when the fighting was going on, and you had both these parents fighting on each side, and you could just imagine being at an orphanage where you have your your friend's father killed by your father. Well, I, I remember coming the first time, I really thought that Burma would change quick. There was so much conflict going on and I thought, okay, this is gonna be over within a few years. But now, four years later, kind of my perspective of things has changed. Now this conflict is going on for more than 60 years. Uh, but for me, it's important to still have hope that Burma can change. You still gotta hope and to pray for change in Burma, really. Because if you give up hope, that's you give the power to the regime. For people to still care for Burma and still look into what, the, what you can do to bring about a change in Burma, that's, that would be my prayer for you. For me here, you kind of start with the root. You start with the families. Uh, to make real families who can uh, change the small things and then I and bring hope back to the families and then I think within a 10 20 year perspective I think there will be change in Burma well I came here as a 20 year old now I'm 24 and life hasn't turned out the way I thought it would uh, so I'm 
I'm standing here now four years later and I'm very happy with my choice. For the future, I really don't know. People ask me all the time, are you going to stay here? How long are you going to stay here? And I'm like, well, this is my life. You can't really, I can't separate, separate my, my life from this thing anymore. So for me to even imagine a future without this becomes very weird. And for, for the future, for the kids here, I just have a vision for them to be a part of change in Burma, to see that they can become good leaders and even just good families. They can start their own families and be good fathers and good mothers. And in that way, they can change the whole, whole life of a community. Yeah.